Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis, Mario Gessel and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 87 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating the utility of multimodality imaging for finding the culprit lesion in a patient with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. The patient had previous cabbage with lima to LAD, SVG2M, and SVG2 posterior lateral, and presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. He did have old Q waves in the precordial leads and the inferior leads, and ST segment depression in lead 1 and AVL. He underwent diagnostic angiography. The lima to LAD was patent. The SVG2M was also patent without significant change compared with the previous angiogram from a few years prior. And there was also no obvious culprit lesion in the SVG to the posterior lateral vessel. So what we have here is a clinical scenario in which the patient clinically has myocardial infarction but no culprit lesion can be identified. So it's a, a dilemma about finding, first of all, whether the patient indeed had NMI and second, where, what is the culprit lesion? And the way to do this is uh, using various tools. One is uh, careful and geographic review to see any potential culprits, which in our case were not obvious. Assessment of LV function to see if there is any area of whole motion abnormality and what vessel it corresponds to. And also intravascular imaging can be done, preferably with OCT, to find areas of thrombus and ulceration. If this does not work, then cardiac MRI can help uh, establishing a diagnosis. And this is also reflected, reflected on the AHA consensus statement on uh, the diagnosis of Minoka. Cardiac MRI is the next step after a geographic review and LV assessment to look, first of all, if there's an MI or myocarditis, Takotsubo, or any other syndromes. So MRI was indeed done in our patient with interesting findings. There was edema on the lateral wall on T2 imaging. And there was also late gadolinium enhancement, both in that area in the lateral wall, but also in another part of the anterior wall, which seemed to correspond with an old myocardial infarction. So the patient, based on the MRI, did have a lateral wall myocardial infarction. As a result, we went back and did optical coherence tomography of the SVG to the obtuse marginal branch, and indeed we found area of ulceration and thrombus in the SVG that was subsequently stented uh, using um, a drug eluting stent. This provided a nice result, and the patient did not have any recurrent symptoms. So our case shows that uh, in patients who have um, a myocardial infarction of their bypass that can be due to either progression of disease in the native vessel or due to the bypass graft, with uh, the vein grafts being the more likely culprit several years after the bypass has occurred. Second, if there is no obvious culprit, MRI can first help establish that a myocardial infarction indeed occurred and also exclude alternative causes such as Takotsubo or myocarditis. And finally, if uh, MRI demonstrates an area of infarction, then uh, OCT can be done in the vessel supplying that area to identify any areas of ulceration, erosion, thrombus that correspond to the lesion that caused the myocardial infarction and subsequently undergo treatment. So multimodality imaging with MRI and OCT in combination solved the mystery of myocardial infarction in this patient and allowed successful treatment. Thank you.